Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to be talking about my mediocre books of 2021. The not so great or the not so bad ones. Like the in between and I guess, you know, meh. I guess that's the word we could also use. I know we tend to use mediocre as bad, but it really means of only ordinary or moderate quality. Neither good nor bad, barely adequate. And another source says is just acceptable, but not good, just not good enough. So I think these are the middle of the road books for me of 2021. Like my other videos, these aren't in any particular order. This has just happened of like how I wrote them down. Uh, the first book on my list is Bridge of Souls by Victoria Schwab. And I know you're pretty confused why it made it onto this list because I've said before that Victoria Schwab is one of my favorite authors. But this one was pretty disappointing. Not because it was bad, only because I didn't love it as much as I loved her other stuff. This is the third book in the Cassidy Blake series. It started off Tunnel of Bones, I believe. No, excuse me. It started off with City of Ghosts. That was the first book, and the second book was Tunnel of Bones. City of Ghosts took place in Edinburgh. Tunnel of Bones took place in Paris. And this one takes place in New Orleans. Cassidy Blake is our main character, and she follows her parents. Uh, her parents do this travel paranormal show. And what makes her special is that she actually survived an accident that should have killed her. And because she didn't die, she now has the ability of traveling between the veil. And her job really is now to like help ghosts move on. And this one in particular, uh, she has moved between the veil and, and the real world so often that she catches the eye of like one of the emissaries of, of death. And their job is to like, okay, you should have died. So we got to make that right. So she spends the entirety of this one trying to survive that and trying to beat that. You would think that because of like what the storyline was, you'd think it'd be like a lot more action packed and it was, but I felt like overall, this just felt like a filler book and I just wasn't wowed by it. Like the first book I rated four out of five stars, the second one I rated five out of five stars. And I, I really think that maybe this one, this, that second one should have been the first book. But this one, it's setting up for something else to happen. And I just, I get why it's needed in the series. I just didn't necessarily love it. French Milk by Lucy Nisley is another one I was kind of surprised to put on this list because Lucy Nisley is also one of my favorite authors. She tends to do um, graphic memoirs, like travelogue sort of books. And I really enjoy her art style and the way she tells her story. But this one, it was just, mm. In this one, Lucy goes on this month-long trip to Paris with her mom, and she's definitely like going through some things, and I get that. She was a younger person going through a different moment of time for herself, but eventually it was like, can you please stop complaining and enjoy this wonderful opportunity that you have with your mother? And I think my standards were probably just a little too high because I read relish first and the way she like talks about food and that like I like I thought for sure she was going to talk about food in that same capacity in this one and it just wasn't the case and so like I had different I had different expectations and I think that's what really affected my enjoyment of reading this. So much like Bridge of Souls I had rated this one three stars and before I like continue like continue with this video and you know repeat myself all of these books are three star reads. Now the next one on my list is The People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry and I wasn't sure what to expect out of this actually. I've never read this author before. It just looked like a fun beach read sort of book. It was like a summer romance and I was like you know what I'm feeling something you know fun, flighty, maybe a little spicy. And yes there was spice but the overall story was kind of meh. Like the idea was like these two best friends, they go on these summer trips every year. However, like something happens between them and so it makes them like stop going on these summer trips. And the guy best friend eventually gets in this relationship with somebody else. And the girl best friend misses the trips that she had with him and maybe regrets like how things fell apart. I live on a very busy street so if you hear that I'm very sorry. And she feels pretty stagnant in the working situation that she is in because she works for like a travel company. And so she's like, oh, the last, last awesome trip I took was with my best friend. And so let's try to recreate that. So I, I enjoyed the concept and overall it was pretty sweet, but the pacing was just too slow for me. And the back and forth was pretty confusing too because it kept flitting before to like before their relationship went into the dumps. 
and uh, to present day, so it was a little distracting. Now the fourth book on my list is 10 Truths in a Dare by Ashley Alston, and I picked this up expecting to love it because I read 10 Blind Dates, and man, did I love that. I was like, all right, so I clearly like this author's style of writing and how they like write it, like write romances. I'm like, okay, so this is a contemporary YA romance, at least that's what 10 Blind Dates was. And so I'm very much interested to see what 10 Truths in a Dare is. So it takes place in the same universe. And the first one um, in this giant family, this girl has a breakup. She's heartbroken about it. And everyone else in this big family sets her up on 10 Blind Dates. And this next one, it's the, our main character's cousin is now the main character of this one. She is salutatorian, she's graduating, and she's super excited only to find out that she's actually missing her half credit of Jim. And she took Jim as an off-campus credit at, and uh, the golf teacher that she had because she was constantly late, um, it affected her grade enough to where this golf teacher won't sign off on her half credit. So he makes a deal with her hey, work this tournament with me and I'll sign it off. But she doesn't want her parents knowing that she's not going to all these graduation parties and instead of doing this tournament. Because her parents went off out of town and now she, in order to make her parents feel comfortable that she's home alone, she has one of those like life alert things so her parents can track her every movement. And it's like, okay, sure, that makes sort of sense. But the mom actually consistently checked on her location, which I thought was very weird and very controlling. And eventually got to the point, I'm like, girl, stop lying and just say where you are. Because in order to like still go to this tournament, but still have her parents think she's going to all these parties, her cousins, including the girl who's the main character of the first book, step in and like go to these parties for her and like text her mom pretending that she's her. So there are certain elements of the story that was just incredibly frustrating, Like, but the ending was delightful, so it did save it a tiny bit for me. So overall cute, but I didn't love it as much as the 10 blind dates. Now to stay on the theme of graduations, my last book is Assume the Worst, The Graduation Speech You'll Never Hear by Carl Heisen. Sorry, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. But it was illustrated by Roz Chast. I love Roz Chast. I love her stuff. And so I saw that she illustrated this. I'm like, all right, I'm going to pick this up. But I have never read anything by Carl before. And I knew he tends to write more humor-based stuff. So I'm like, all right, it's short. This should be fun. But his humor really isn't my cup of tea. Because what it is, it's literally a graduation speech. I don't think he's ever given it. But it's like full of satire. But for me, a lot of the satire sounded just almost too depressing. Like the humor just wasn't for me. Despite it getting a little bleak at times, I do have to say I appreciate the advice that he gave about setting boundaries and finding happiness where you can. Like there was some merit in reading this. But that's it. Those are my mediocre books of 2021. Let me know down in the comments what books you didn't necessarily love. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I guess it's ta-ta for now. Bye guys.